Hey there. So I'm going to be showing you a strategy that I used last year in 2020 in the middle of a coronavirus to close 48 seller transactions that resulted in $743,580. That's right. About four per month. In fact, in December, in one of the craziest times of the year, hardly anyone sells, we closed 13, I think 13 transactions. So this absolutely works for you, whether you're a brand new agent, whether you're an experienced agent or whether you're an agent who wants it's just to do, you know, you're, you're doing 30, but you want to hit, hit a 60 mark. This strategy will work for you. But understand it is a strategy. Let's just say they, they, they create a lead magnet on Facebook and they'll say, Hey, would you like a home evaluation or a home analysis? And what they'll do is they will ask people for their information, but they're forgetting a very, very important part of what needs to happen. And that is establishing yourself as the authority, developing trust, breaking down the barriers and giving it someone the reason to want to actually click. And so that is a lead magnet. What a lead magnet is, is you provide something of value to get somebody contact information back. And the goal is, is that you want to, to be able to own people's contact information as often as possible. And the reason why you want this is because if these portals like Facebook or Instagram or any of them ever, ever close down, you want to make sure that you still own the contact information of people. So you can future market to them. You can email market to them and the, and the such. So how did I go about getting these trend, these 48 listings, right? 48 closed seller transactions. Now we actually closed more than that in 2020. I closed 90 real estate transactions. And I understand that I'm I'm a full-time coach. Now, I'm a real estate coach and trainer. I do that about 99% of the time. I spend about five hours a month on my real estate business. And so my brother, who's now my business partner, he goes to the listing appointments and he shows up as, as basically as me and people are buying my systems and processes. So pretty darn good, right? Doing 90 transactions, working five hours a month. Now, what does that five hours a month equate to? And I'm not saying this is going to happen to you. The only reason that this has happened to me is because I've been in real estate for 20 years and I have these systems and processes in place. And I have, uh, now I have my brother and also a full-time transaction coordinator and a part-time marketer that are helping me do this so that I then can do coaching. But this exact strategy is what we used in real estate. I'm going to break it down for you step-by-step step exactly what we did. Here's what we do. Okay. So first of all, understand that in order for you to be seen as a solution, you need to be solving a problem. One more time. In order for you to be seen as a solution, you need to be solving a problem. Now, let me give you an example of what that looks like. Okay. So first of all, there's different types of marketing that you can do. And the first phase, the first strategy of attracting these sellers is to give information and value and to solve a problem. And I do that by positioning myself as the expert in real estate and solving a problem that the sellers have. So for example, right now we have very, very limited inventory. In fact, in the 20 years in my, in the business, I've never seen such low inventory as that that I'm seeing right now. Okay. We had 48 listings on the market as of, you know, in, in January, when typically we have around 90 to 95, something somewhere in that every year year in January after the holiday season. It's less than half. So that means that we want listings. Why else do we want listings? Because listings are going to bring more buyers, right? And it's also a little bit easier than working with buyers, especially right now with the market the way that it is. It's almost impossible to get buyers into a home because there are multiple offers, bidding wars, and buyers have to pretty much sell their firstborn children in order to get an offer accepted. So we want listings, okay? So step number one, I'm going to break this down in a minute for you. Step number one is figuring out what problem are sellers having? Well, the my December campaign, my January campaign, and my February campaign all resolved around creating content, step one of the strategy, where I am solving the problems that sellers are having. Well, what problems are seller, sellers having right now? Well, sellers are afraid in many cases that if they list their property, unless they're moving out of the area, even if they're moving out of the area, they're afraid that they're not going to be able to find a replacement property. All right. So they are worried. So let's just say I, I create a video and this again is blanket marketing, mass marketing. And there is a time for mass marketing, there's a time for blanket marketing. And that is to position yourself as the authority. It's to nurture people. It's to have top of mind, right? I call it the five R's. You want to get people to refer you. You want to retain more customers and you want to get more referrals. And you do that through rituals and routines. Blanket marketing is when you're speaking to everyone, right? It's a part of your nurturing process. It's a part of your brand awareness process. It's a part of your top of mind awareness process, right? And there's a time for that. That would look something like this, doing a market update, doing a community video, interviewing a local restaurant, talking about the best dog 
dog parks to go to, talking about the best restaurants to eat at. You know, what's your favorite hot spot for going on a date on Valentine's Day? What's the best places to go to happy hour? That's blanket marketing. Also doing just regular seller tip videos, buyer tip videos, market report videos, neighborhood, specific neighborhood type of information. That is all blanket marketing. And there's a time for that. But what if I say the market is super hot and if you're thinking about buying a house, now's a great time. Well, that's great for blanket marketing, but what if I'm a veteran and as a veteran, I am a veteran, I've got a great job, but I don't have hardly any money in the bank and my credit score is about 650, so I don't think I can buy a property. I'm not even hearing you when you say now's a great time to buy. So sometimes we need to do marketing, our marketing, our copy, right? We need to make sure that our copy speaks directly to somebody. So what about this? Are you a veteran and you don't have a lot of money in the bank, but you're a vet and you've got a great job. Your credit score is not so hot, but do you know that you can actually probably purchase a home and most likely the cost of that home is going to be less than you're paying in rent and you're going to be able to have a mortgage write off. What did I just do? I just now spoke directly to somebody. The more our content, our copy can speak directly to somebody and their problems they're having, the more likely that we are going to convert those people. Okay, now let's put it in the seller. Are you a seller right now and you really, really want to move, but you're afraid that if you sell your home, that you're not going to be able to find a replacement property because it's crazy out there right now and there's limited inventory. Hey, I'm Krista Mayshore. Just last month alone, we sold 13 properties, 13 listings, and we help sellers just like you find a replacement property. There are several solutions to this problem. Here's what they are. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Now all of a sudden the seller is like, who probably wasn't thinking about selling because he's afraid to. Now I've spoken directly to that seller. And now that seller is thinking, yes, that's me. I want to sell my home. There's a solution to it. So what have I done? Now I've taken these leads, the veteran and the seller who didn't think that they would that they could sell or wanted to because of lack of inventory. I've identified a problem. I've told them there's a solution. Now I've taken that cold lead who probably wouldn't have ever have even thought about selling or buying. I've moved them up to a warm lead. Now that warm lead process is for me to nurture them, to give them more information, to give them more value. Okay, that is step two. That warm lead then becomes a hot lead. Now they understand they have a problem. They understand the solutions to the problem. Now the goal is to get them to understand that I am the best solution to to solve that problem. That is the whole strategy and the process behind how I got those 48 closed transactions in 2020, resulting in $743,000 in commissions. So what do most people do? They start with, would you like a home analysis? Or, hey, it's a great time to buy a house. Wanna go to my buyer seminar? No, I don't because half the people don't even realize they can even, or know they even want to, or realize that there's a solution to a problem that they're having. So identify what people's problems are, start creating content that meets the needs and and specifically speaks to specific people, all right? That there's actually a study that was done. There's a book called Sway, it's titled Sway. And they did a study where they took people that were in a, going to college and they had a college professor who they said was sick for the day. So what they did was they gave these college students this um, biography of a, a biography of the substitute teacher. And these biographies were exactly the same, okay? Except for two words. So they talked about how great the accolades were, the professor's experience, the colleges he had gone to, where he had taught, just all these wonderful things about the presser to really show his, you know, why he was capable of teaching. But there was only two words that were different in each of these biographies. One said rather warm. He's a rather warm person. The other one said he's a rather cold person. So rather warm, rather cold. At the end of the study, what happened was they actually did a, they did a survey and they said, what'd you think about the professor? The ones that got the thing that said rather cold, they said he was pompous and mean and arrogant. They didn't like him. You know, they just gave him horrible reviews. The ones that said rather warm, all the students said how much they loved him. He was great. He was so easy, so easy to listen to, a wonderful teacher. Now understand, both groups of students got the exact same biography with the difference of just rather warm or rather cold. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the pre-frame, what we do from bringing somebody from one section to the next is super, super important in what we're doing, right? So we need to make sure that sometimes we do blanket marketing, mass marketing, okay? But we also, at times, really, really speak to a certain group of people. Um, remember, sometimes when you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one. Think about that seller. Think about that veteran. They weren't even thinking they had the ability to until I made them aware. So my messaging has to speak directly to somebody. So I like to identify where people are at and what problems they're going through and then be the solution to that.
that. That is step number one. Again, remember, you cannot be a solution unless you're solving a problem. So let's go ahead and now talk about, you know, my super absolutely sexy um, strategy resulting in this. This is this, I absolutely call this my, my, my wonderful, wonderful, super sexy marketing strategy, marketing plan to get buyers and sellers. This is exactly how I do it. Okay. So remember the key to conversions is what it's positioning yourself as the authority. It's coming up with the strategy. It's developing a relationship. And then it's having absolutely the very best tools once you get there. Okay. And what do people want? What do people want in an agent? What they want is, let me just go ahead and share my screen here. If you're watching this and you'll be able to see it. So what do people want in an agent? They want somebody that is innovative and they want somebody that is knowledgeable. That is what people want. Okay. They also want somebody who's willing to do what other people are not willing to do. We need to be willing to stand out. I always tell my students that you are always on a job interview. Anything and everything that you do, do is an absolute representation of who you are and how you do business. So we want to remember that when we're putting content out there, right? So if we're willing to do what everyone else isn't, then hey, we're doing something right. So strategy is key. Again, unless you're solving your problem, you cannot be considered a solution. What's the key? The key is to identify problems so that you can be considered as a solution to those problems. So here's what the steps are. And I'm going to show you examples of each one. So step number one in this strategy is for you to find a solution to a problem. For example, seller having the lack of inventory, buyer being a veteran, not being able to buy. That's step one. Step two is you're going to create video content around the solution to the problem. Okay. So video content, you're going to be putting, creating video content. Remember, you're going to be putting this content on your social media sites, but you're not just putting them on your social media sites. You're going to be putting these through your ads manager on Facebook. Now, why is this important that we don't just put them on our business page or put them on our personal page? Here's why. When you create content and put it on your business page, your personal page, the only people that are seeing it, it's actually your friends and family. It's your mom, right? What, what, let's just take Facebook, for example, Facebook's algorithm puts you in front of people that are already engaging and already interacting. It says, Hey, John likes Krista's stuff. So I'm going to put more of Krista's stuff in front of John. That's what Facebook's algorithm does. So we need to pay to have people pay attention. The reason that I get anywhere from 300, 600 hours of watch time. Yes. Hours, 600 hours of watch time, you know, anywhere from 3000, 6,000 engagements, like comments, shares, hundreds of thousands of views on my ads that I'm putting out there. My content is because I'm paying Facebook. So people will pay attention for you to think that you're going to get organic reach is pretty much impossible, right? In order for you to get a viral organic video is impossible. But if you could spend a couple hundred dollars, I spend $200 on every video that I create. I put an ad behind it, an ad budget behind it. I spend $200 and I take that $200 and I target people within my local community. So now I'm making sure that people besides just my friends and family are seeing me over and over and over again. Think about how powerful that is. Why is it that McDonald's markets during the Super Bowl? They do it because they know that it that it works, right? They're going to spend a hundred times more money marketing on the Super Bowl because they know that the Super Bowl, that marketing works, being brand awareness works, being seen works, being visible works. That's why McDonald's does it. McDonald's is a $74 billion company, I believe. And Burger King is only a $7 billion company. When you think about Burger King, immediately Ronald McDonald comes to mind. The, the golden star, the golden M comes to line, mind. You don't think about that when you think about Burger King. Because Burger King does not brand anywhere near as well as McDonald's does. Branding is important. So imagine you being seen over and over and over again for you know several hundred hours of watch time on every video that you produce by everyone in your community over and over and over again. What's going to happen? Your referrals are going to go up. Your, your repeat business is going to go up. You're going to retain more customers and clients, right? More buyers and sellers. And, and you're going to, your referrals go up, out like crazy because they can't forget about you because you're being seen over and over and over again. People are going to refer you that you don't even know are referring you, right? Now you're constantly top of mind. You're positioning yourself as the expert. You are the go-to trusted name that comes up when somebody goes, when somebody thinks about real estate. What else happens? As my good friend, Sharon Cervate says, my, one of my mentors, he says, you need to win before you arrive. Win before you arrive. So what am I doing? Now, all of a sudden, when I get in front of a seller or a buyer or somebody in my community, I'm already winning before I arrive because they feel like they already know me. In fact, this is called a parasocial relationship. What a parasocial relationship is, is it's somebody that watches you on the other side of a screen. They start to develop a relationship with you. It's kind of like when you cry or cheer for your characters on TV. You do that because you're because you've developed a relationship with them. You love them, right? But it's a one-sided relationship. It's a parasocial relationship. This is what happens with you. You're like a little mini celebrity in your community and your community feels like they know you. One of my students, Julie Patterson, 
person. She actually went to a listing appointment and she does a lot of videos talking about how she loves goldfish. They had a bag of goldfish for her on their table. That is what branding is all about. That is what putting yourself in front of somebody over and over again is all about. It's about doing that, okay? Now I'm winning before I arrive. They're already developing a relationship with me. I'm positioning myself as the authority. I'm solving problems. I'm breaking down their barriers. They're getting to know me. They're getting to trust me and they're getting to like me. So now when I show up to that appointment, I'm much more likely to actually get that appointment than my competitors are, okay? Now understand this strategy does not happen overnight. It does take time. You're gonna have to, you know, spend, you know, several months even really, really getting your community to get to know you and to get them to trust you. Research shows when I first started coaching about three years ago, it was like 12 times that it took somebody before they'd ever interact, like 12 times of seeing you. Now it's between 33 and 47 times. In fact, Sharon, one of my mentors says it takes 47 hours of consumption before somebody will actually really want to engage and interact with you. So knowing that, understand it will take a little bit of time, but once it hits, it's like this massive, huge momentum and this massive, huge snowball that starts to happen. Okay, so that is the strategy. Let's go ahead and talk now about what is strategy number two. So I create these videos. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run an ad in the Ads Manager account in Facebook. Now I'm going to um, also create retargeting videos. Okay, we call this we call this um, creating special ad audiences. We're gonna, we are going to, we're gonna, that's for lookalike audiences. We're going to create retargeting videos to people that watch a part of this video. So I create a video, target people. I utilize the video views objective in Facebook because I want Facebook to go after people that like to watch videos. I also use the reach objective. I split, I split my budget in half. 50% goes to video views, 50% goes to reach because I want my entire community to see me. I wanna reach everyone. I also want Facebook's algorithm to go after people that like to watch video views. So now I'm kind of going after both, splitting my budget. Then I'm creating a special ad audience, which is just like a lookalike audience, okay? Once Facebook starts to understand what that first ad is doing, that first video, how it's performing, then I'm gonna create another audience, a special ad audience where I'm gonna tell Facebook, okay, find me more people like that. People that are watching this first video, find me more people like that. So then now that I've done that, created my first video, created my, my special ad audience video, now I'm gonna do these next steps to both of those both of those audiences. So now I'm gonna create two more videos, okay, that are on solutions of the problem that I'm that I'm trying to find. Let's just say I'm helping sellers that are afraid to, to, uh, to sell. They're afraid they won't find a replacement property. I'm gonna do videos on a rent back is the solution. Taking contingent offers, letting the uh, selling contingent upon you finding home of choice, right? Maybe you can find off market properties, all these different solutions. Then I'm gonna target people that have watched 75% or more of that. If you've watched that video, 75% or more, then I'm going to target you. Originally though, on the first day, I forgot to mention this, I'm going to retarget people who have watched 50% or more. Now, once they've watched 50% or more, then I'm gonna retarget people again and say, okay, here's another video on the, how you, you know, s solutions to selling, okay? From there, then I'm going to have people that watch 75% or more, then I'm going to send them to a what's my homework. So create three videos regarding the solution, run ads behind them, target them with exactly the, what you're seeing here on this screen, all right? That's the targeting mechanism. Then what I'm going to do is once people have watched those three videos, then I'm going to run an ad that's like a what's my home worth ad, and I'm gonna use the conversion objective in Facebook. So now I'm retargeting people that have watched these three videos. Now, what do I know here? Now that I, what do I know here? Now I know that these people are most likely probably interested in those, what, whatever those three videos are about, right? They have that problem. They want the answers to it. I probably know they're pretty interested in thinking about selling because they're watching these videos on selling. So now is where my strategy starts where now I'm going to take those videos, okay? I'm sorry, th that audience that watched. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to re retarget them to a what's my home worth ad, all right? Hey, what's your home worth? Now they're getting the what's my home worth ad. I don't start with that. Most marketers start with, give me your information. What's my home worth, right? You know, go to the seller seminar, go to this buyer seminar, you know, download this guide. No, no, no. We want to develop a relationship first. We want to find out what it is that they're interested in and give them more information than that. That's why this works so well. But now let's take it even one step further. So this is like the ninja secret sauce of marketing and the strategy what I do after that lead comes through, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now and I will also show you examples. So now once people are, are doing what's my home worth and they said, yes, I want that, Krista, they're raising their hand, they're saying, I want to do that. Then I'm gonna start retargeting testimonial videos from past sellers, all right? I'm also gonna use the video views objective with this. They're gonna see, they're gonna start getting videos of me helping at past sellers. Then I'm going to do another ad. I'm 
gonna retarget to them more marketing videos of past homes that I've sold to them. They can start to see, man, you know, she's her marketing is beautiful, right? I want them to see how I market my homes, what makes me different. Then I also start to retarget to them more seller tips video, right? I'm now talking about, you know, seller tips. And what I'm doing on the seller tips video is I'm utilizing the reach objective and the video views objective at this point, okay? Then I'm going to retarget and continue to retarget forever and ever to th this group of people more authority type of videos. These are market updates, local restaurants, seller tips. I'm going to interview local professionals. I'm going to do best dog parks in town, best places to eat, right? Best places to go on your first date. What's the best happy hour restaurants? They're going to start getting that. And then I'm going to repeat that, okay? Now, once you get the CMA request, here's what I want to make you sure you understand. This is very, very important. So again, stress, worried, we've got solutions, okay? Are you thinking about selling? That's There's a video on that. Then I do another video, right? These videos are solving problems. Limited inventory, questions about selling your home. These are what these videos look like. Now understand, these videos are targeting people and I can, once I know how much they're watching, I retarget them more nurturing videos that are now then going to warm these people up. I'm nurturing, I'm warming them up, okay? I am also creating spe a special, I'm using the special ad audience, which is otherwise known as lookalike audiences, telling Facebook, find me more people like this, have them watch this video. So now I'm doing more nurturing, thinking of selling your home, nurturing videos, considering selling your home, nurturing videos, okay? Then what I do is then at that point, now I'm sending them to what is your home worth? Hey, East County is a hot market, inventory is low. Here's another example of Zillow. We took a screenshot of Zillow and we show all the different homes that are, that are selling and we say, would you like a free home evaluation? This is the strategy behind it. Here's the ads that you're seeing. Here's an example of an ad uh, of a testimonial video that was done, right? Here's a, an ad going after somebody hit that that was a past client that's going to give us a wonderful video that talks about what exactly um, the process was with us. And then again, we're going to show them marketing videos of homes that we've sold in the area. So now they're seeing all these different homes that we have sold in the area, right? Um, and they're getting that as well. And then now once they get that, remember, if they've They've asked for the CMA. They've downloaded the CMA. Now I'm giving them testimonial videos. Now I'm also gonna be giving them marketing videos. Then I'm gonna to continue to nurture them and give them market update videos and videos about the about selling, right? Selling, I'm now putting myself in front of them as the local go-to expert. Here's an example of four real estate expert views of what the 2021 market will do. Here's another video showing, hey, support local businesses and look good doing it, right? I'm, I'm showing another video uh, about the community. So that is the step of exactly what to do, right? And the type of objectives, et cetera, that you're gonna be using in this process, okay? Shows you exactly, you know, step by step by step, you know, video views, conversion, all that, you see it. And meanwhile, you're retargeting and you're also creating a special ad category, utilizing the special ad category, telling Facebook, find me more of these people. This is the strategy. Now I'm going to break down my super sexy, wonderful, this is how you convert sellers, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through this right now. So once you actually get that lead and remember you're you're still targeting more videos, this is what you do. This is where it's going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more work. You are going to hand deliver your CMA. Okay, so you're going to hand deliver your CMA. Here's an example of what our CMA looks like. Okay, we hand deliver this and in this we have examples of our flyers that we've done that are similar. All right, we have, we do a, a CMA drop off right here. We have reviews from our past clients in here. We deliver this directly to their porch. Now, some of you are thinking, well, Krista, that's expensive to hand deliver this. Well, we put this in a really pretty package. It's in a bag that they can reuse. It says Homes by Krista with our phone number so that they can, they're actually marketing for us while they're at the grocery store, right? We put this CMA in there. We also put this marketing plan in there. So this beautiful marketing plan. These are pictures of, of homes in the area and they get a 20 plus page marketing brochure that we send to them that talks all about our digital marketing, everything that we do that makes us just so wonderful. I've got my credentials in here, everything about me, what I've done in the industry, you know, blah, blah, blah. All of that is in here. My team, they get this dropped off at the same time. I also drop off a book. So here's a book. What to expect when selling your home? 
This goes to everyone, unless they're in East County. If you live in East County, they get what to expect when selling your East County home. If they live in my actual home that I farm, the area that I farm, they get what to expect when selling your Deer Ridge or Saddle Lakes home. So I drop all of this off at one time. Then I knock on the door and if they're there, I say, hey, it's Krista, you requested a market analysis. I wanted to go ahead and give this to you. If they do not answer the door, then I'm going to do a bomb bomb video. If I have their their information, I'm going to say, hey, it's Krista. Just wanted to, just wanted to, you know, really quickly inter- let you know that I dropped off a market analysis on your porch. And I'm also going to be emailing you a digital copy of the book, a digital copy of the marketing plan. And I'm going to be emailing you a really quick three minute video that's going to be breaking down what this home and anal- what the home analysis is. So then I do a video. Let's kind of show you exactly what that video looks like. I'll go ahead and and play it. So basically what this video is, is doing is this video is basically just breaking down exactly what's in the market analysis, right? So I'm really quickly here, just going to be going over and reviewing with the seller. I'm reviewing, I'm reviewing with the seller exactly. And just really quick three minutes, exactly what this market analysis says. And I'm going to go ahead and just play this for you. It's about three minutes and 46 seconds. So you can see it and you can know exactly what it is that we say and do. Hey, Beatrice, this is Josh Vitale with Homes by Krista. I just wanted to reach out to you uh, regarding your property there at 4605 Country Hills in Antioch. I hope uh, you guys are well. I wanted to give you a little bit of details on it. I worked up an analysis for you. Um, So what I'm going to do is just kind of kind of go through that analysis real quickly. I, on this email, I've got the link for you. So you feel free to take a look at that email, take a look at that link. And it really does a detailed analysis, but real quickly, just wanted to show you what the market's doing right now. Right now, we have less than 50 homes active on the market in Antioch, which is crazy low. What that means is there's not a lot of homes on the market, which means your house is going to get uh, is going to be able to get more for your property, depending on your condition and how things look as well. But you can see here, uh, this is how you stack up. You have 2,000, a little over 2,000 square feet, and you can see that they range anywhere from the uh, high, the mid sixes, low sixes, all the way down to the 494 mark. What I wanted to do is kind of show you how you stack up. Uh, there is a model match there on Deerfield, exactly your square footage. Your lot size is a lot bigger. So what's really good about that is, depending on your condition, hopefully we can get you more than that. So my thought would be, just without seeing condition, how it looks, you're probably going to be in that 600 mark, that high, you know, mid sixes, um, depending. Love to chat with you, kind of our process, um, things like this video, um, how we do things, how we 3D market. Um, in COVID, things are done a little differently now, but we've been designed and prepped for that to anyway. So Silvercrest Way in Antioch, 575, 10 days on the market, really close in square footage, uh, sold. And uh, you can see it sold in October. Um, so, and you can see how it looks fairly nice there. Nice uh, countertops, three car garage. Um, so it looks pretty nice there. And also you can see it looks clean, looks like the new carpet, etc. Moving on to Country Hills 4640. This one is a little larger, 626. So that's where I really got my value there in the sixes. And you may even be able to meet, meet this mark or above it. It just really depends on how um, an appraiser will look at it. But you can see this property does have a pool um, in ground and it does have the solar heat. So you can see it there, see how it's got the hardwood floors, granite countertops, looks real nice. Um, Hopefully yours looks like that as well. But give us a call, we'd love to chat with you. You can see how we still stayed within that 2000 square, 572 on this one, seven days on the market. And feel free to look at those pictures as well. Really wanted to just kind of give you a, like a real base um, ideas to what the market's doing. Smoking hot. We are seeing multiple offers on our properties and getting uh, over asking. And really, I would love to do that same thing for you. Reach out to us, please. My phone number is on this CMA here. Our office number two is 925-325-4663. Um, here is basically a breakdown of the homes. You can see here the averages, the highs, and then the pending one that's low. And this, the pictures that you'll see in here uh, show that as well. So give me a call. We'd love to hear from you. Um, again, this is Josh Vitale with Homes by Krista, Krista Mayshore's office. We are a team. You know her. She is a, a very strong in the uh, selling homes in your specific area, and so am I. So love to work with you. Give me a call if you have any questions at all. 
and uh, hope to hear from you. Have yourself a great day. Be safe. Okay, so that's exactly the the video that we send. You can see that. So what are we doing here? What are we doing right now that's different from our competitors? Number one, most people are just emailing a market analysis. We're dropping a market analysis off. We're positioning ourselves as different. Remember, you're always on a job interview. Anything and everything that you do is a representation of how you do business. So you're basically in the mind of the seller. You're basically in the mind of the seller. You're letting them know, this is how I work. This is what you can expect that I will do when I work with you. Okay, so you've dropped off you've dropped off the the marketing plan you've dropped off the cma you've dropped off the book the book itself totally positions you as the authority figure um less than one percent of the population actually writes a book and this is not one of those cheesy books that you put your that you get online that talks about selling you don't ever want to put your name in one of those type of books believe me those kinds of books are worse than <laughs> you shouldn't write one at all right you want to have a book that's well written my book was written by me with my 20 years experience and a new york times best-selling editor it is 100 written to talk about how how different I am, like all the strategies that make me so unique, why we do what we do. We have stats and results in there. It's basically to show how I'm a community market leader and why they're going to want to hire me over my competitors because of how different that we do things. And we show examples and it's backed by um, a lot of data and research from NAR. So we drop that off. And again, if you want to be a co-author with me, you can always reach out to me. I can teach you how you can become a co-author with me of my book. Um, this past month alone, we had just around 100 people decide to be a co-author with me because the book, again, is very, very well written. In fact, if you go to Amazon, you can actually get the copy of the book. It's what to expect when selling your home, the savvy seller. So if you want to go take a look at that, you can purchase it and see what I like to put my name on that. Or it'll also show you all the different wonderful things that we do and what makes us so, so different when with the teachings that we actually teach our students to be community market leaders. So now you're sending them there. What is the next step? The next step that you're going to do after you, after you send them this wonderful, wonderful video, now the job is to send a copy copy of the pre-listing presentation video. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you about three minutes of this video so you can actually hear what it is that we're talking about. Again, remember, we, this video is positioning us as different. All right. Jimmy, go ahead and insert that three minutes of the video. I'll tell you where and then edit, edit this part out. Now, once they've seen that video, what does that video do? That video now positions me as an expert. It gets them to know me, like me, and trust me. Understand that's a 17 minute long video talking all about what makes me unique and different. It's giving me my competitive, unique value add. I'm not talking about things like open houses or door knocking or flyers or brokers tour. In fact, the video talks about why those things are ineffective and why this type of marketing that I'm doing actually works. I show massive examples, as you saw, you know, 357 hours, 555 hours of watch time. That is positioning me as different and unique. So what happens when I get to that appointment now, they see me as somebody that that is different than my competitors. So I'm attracting a higher priced home and also a higher commission, right? Than my competitors. Now I'm also after that, I'm going to email a copy of the marketing plan. I'm going to email a copy of the savvy seller and I'm going to email them a seller's guide. So again, that is why these I am converting at such a high level. It's because I'm winning before I arrive online. I'm positioning myself as the expert. I'm solving problems so I can be the solution. I'm developing a relationship with people and I'm not saying, hey, give me your information. I'm taking my time first, getting to know them and, and getting them comfortable so that they're more likely to convert. Understand too, research shows, again, the more my content, remember the pre-frame, remember that, that thing about the, the professor, right? Think about the example I gave about the seller that wants to sell but can't or isn't thinking they want to sell because they're worried they won't be able to find a replacement property or that veteran who when I give a market update is not listening because they don't think that they can purchase. We want to make sure that at times we're doing blanket marketing, reaching everyone, but other times we're really, really speaking directly to somebody. Research shows that the more our content speaks directly to someone, the more likely they're going to convert. That is why having niches and multiple niches is very important because you you really speak directly to somebody. Like if I was to say, hey, you want to sell your home? What about if I say, do you live in Cortona Park and you're 55? plus, you know what? I specialize in Cortona Park and here's why, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm speaking directly to someone. So why is this so successful? Why does this work? Number one, I'm winning before I arrive, developing a relationship, positioning myself as the expert before I even show up. I'm making sure that I'm putting the right kind of content in front of the right people. So they're more likely to convert and actually say, yes, I do want to give you, I do want a market analysis. Once I get that information, now I'm targeting them on testimonials. I'm targeting them on marketing examples. I'm also targeting them more nurturing information. Information. And then I'm also doing the whole process, hand delivering the market analysis with my book, right? And, and the CMA and my marketing plan. 
I'm doing that, the bomb bomb video. I'm calling them, doing the bomb bomb video, telling them to check their email. I'm doing the email explaining what the what the market analysis was, right? The CMA was. I'm explaining it for three minutes. Then I'm, you know, sending them my pre-listing presentation video, which totally positions me as the authority. I'm also emailing them a sample of my marketing plan, right? And then I'm also sending them a digital copy of my book, a digital copy of my marketing plan, and a digital copy of my seller's guide. What have my competitors done? My competitors have emailed over a report. That is the reason why we closed 48 seller transactions resulting in $743,000 in commissions in 2020 during a worldwide pandemic. These are the types of strategies that we need to start thinking about doing in real estate, right? It's not just about, hey, you know, do an open house. You have to be willing to do things differently. You also, some of you I know are probably thinking, well, Krista, that kind of costs a lot of money and that was probably expensive, right? Like, didn't it cost you money to deliver that? Or didn't it cost you money to write the book? Yes, it did. It cost me a lot of money to write the book, right? A lot of time. It cost me, you know, but it doesn't cost me a lot of money to, to drop off my marketing plan. Yes, it cost me a lot of money to have my marketing plan done and created because I had to hire copywriters and I had to hire, you know, I had to hire designers and I had to do this, these, this wonderful stuff to make it look beautiful and to make it appealing. That was very expensive. But once I have that, it's, it's, I have it right to get it printed is a few dollars to get my book printed is a few dollars, right? So once I have that, it's not that difficult. So the initial part, it takes a little bit of time. But again, if you're one of my students and you work with me, we give you all of this as a business in a box, right? A business in a box. So we do done with you. What took me years and years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to create, you can actually have it for, you know, the cost of just being one of my students and working with me. So if you're watching this and you're a student, yes, time for you to get to work, right? Get to work, start implementing. You've got the step-by-step. -step. Thanks for watching. It was amazing. Appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on your post notifications so you are, you are aware of more times that we go live. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.